Hey guys, this is Programming 2008 with Ring KGMNA on the background and today we're going to do a really helpful tutorial. We're going to see how you can use Windows 2000 as a daily driver and here's how. The computer we are using for this project is the NEC PowerMate VL370. We had a look recently on the channel. And yes, the uh, drivers are compatible with Windows 2000. This motherboard, this computer does support Win 2K, including the GPU, which is a NVIDIA G4 7500LE. It is a weak cut because of the 64-bit memory interface, but I think of upgrading this video card later in this project to see if we can install uh, more modern video cards that are only supported with Windows XP and newer just to see if it is better to have a more powerful video card for Windows 2000. And for storage we're using a 250GB SATA hard drive from Maxter, it is the Diamond Max 23. It is a SATA 2 hard drive so we should get some decent boot and load times. We're also using a single stick of 2 gigs of RAM instead of two 1 gigabyte sticks Yes, you're going to yell at me saying, hey, pro gaming, you're going to be in single channel and the performance will be reduced. I don't believe it's going to reduce it that much because I already had experience with a single channel uh, gaming machine and it didn't perform that bad. So it should be compatible with uh, a single stick of two gigs. But if not, I'm going to put back the two one gigabyte sticks on this motherboard. And the CPU is a Athlon 64X2 4400 Plus, so it is the same stock processor that it came with this computer. As you can see, unfortunately, the machine does not power on with a single stick of 2 gigabytes of DDR2 800 megahertz RAM. So we're going to go back to the two sticks of DDR2 memory so we can get the dual channel memory. Before you start installing Windows 2000, Absolutely do make sure that the SATA type or SATA mode is set to native IDE or legacy IDE, not SATA because Windows 2000, Windows XP, they don't recognize SATA and if you boot into the installation like that, they will give you a blue screen and they will restart. So do make sure that it is set to native or legacy IDE. I recommend going with native IDE because it will identify itself as being a native IDE drive. Also do make sure that the date and time are correct because most websites and Windows updates might require you to have a correct time and date. Otherwise it will just crash and not work. Once all of that is set, insert your CD or your bootable media into your computer and then boot from it. And then the setup should start. And to boot from your media, you need to press the key to enter the boot menu. For example, on this motherboard, it's F8. Often it's F11, F12. Well, it just depends on your motherboard and its BIOS version. But enter the boot menu and then select your CD drive or your USB. If you are doing with the USB method, I recommend doing with the CD because it is a lot safer and more compatible with Windows 2000. So select the CD drive if the uh, installation media is a CD, well, which is the case here. Select that, press enter, and if it says press any key to boot from CD, press any key, enter, space, doesn't matter. If it doesn't say that, it should boot into the setup straight away. All right, so we got to the partition screen, and I and I think you didn't notice that it bypassed the license agreement screen. That's because this is a custom updated ISO. It's not an official one. It is with all updates, including DirectX 9, which we'll have a look later. So once you get to the screen, select the partition you want. I recommend pre-partitioning and formatting the drive on an external computer if you have, which I do. I already partitioned this on a Windows XP computer. And then um, we can just uh, install Windows on that partition without formatting it again. 
but if you don't have any partition, just create one with C enter its size, just like Windows XP, the install process is almost the same. Press enter, then um, choose the file system you want to um, format the drive with. I recommend going with NTFS and then click enter and it will format. So I have two partitions here, one for Windows and one for the data like games. So if the partition is already formatted, you can select the leave the current file system intact, no changes option. So it will not like waste your time to format the drive once again. So just select that and then it will copy the files directly. Just gonna let this thing do and believe it or not, it's going to do everything for you. Like the uh, language setup, the network setup is going to do everything for you. So you don't have to um, stay on your PC permanently. You can just leave it on and walk away. It will do all these things for you. I forgot to tell you that this custom Windows ISO does the entire installation for you. On the first boot, it installs most of the needed updates like DirectX 9, the unofficial service pack 5.1, and then it reboots twice. After that, the installation of the OS is complete, but the updating process is not complete yet. We have to first install the drivers for our hardware and we also have to install some updates manually. Let's get straight into that, shall we? For the drivers and for the updates, you can use an external hard drive or a thumb drive because Windows 2000 does support USB straight away, unlike Windows 98. It does support USB directly without any drivers, just like Windows XP. Finding your drivers is as easy as going to your hardware manufacturer's official site and downloading the drivers from there. For example, I have a NVIDIA GeForce 7500LE, which has official drivers for both Windows 2000 and Windows XP. I'm sure that brings back so many memories to you guys. Now the drivers for the graphics card, the sound card and the network card are installed. All we need to do to get the best display is to increase the color depth to 32 bit, set the resolution to the maximum supported by the monitor, which in my case is 1080p, enable smooth edges of screen fonts and show window contents while dragging so that the uh, text looks a bit sharper and nicer and then the windows move just like Windows XP. Let's start installing the remaining updates manually, starting with Internet Explorer 6 Service Pack 1. Followed by the Internet Explorer 6 Service Pack 1 hotfix for Windows 2000. And yes, some updates like this one will require to restart the computer. So yes, you will be restarting this a lot, just keep that in mind. After that we installed the root certificates update from 2017 and as you saw it instantly installed so this one was the easiest so far. Then is followed by the install of Microsoft Visual C++ 2008 redistributable 32-bit. To add compatibility to modern stuff we also need to install the VC++ runtime 2017 for Windows 2000. This will make sure that modern stuff will load properly on Windows 2000 and it will have no compatibility issues. 
Next you need to install the modified version of the .NET Framework 4 to ensure compatibility with more modern apps. And then we can install the final update that is required for modern apps and games. It is the Windows 2000 Extended Kernel Project. This is by far the longest installation and will require you to reboot the machine. So let it do, reboot the machine and then you're ready to go. Additional step, this is only for dual core CPUs. If you have a dual core CPU and you have the updates installed, do apply this registry, the dual core fix, because some updates break the dual core compatibility of Windows 2000. So apply this registry, reboot the machine once again, and then you are finally ready to go. But if you have a single core CPU, you can ignore this step. After applying the dual core fix registry and rebooting your machine, you will notice that in software like CPU-Z and also in Task Manager, that both cores of our processor are recognized and this means that our dual core CPU can work properly with the operating system and all the games. And now we are ready to go. We can finally install some necessary apps to use Windows 2000 as our daily driver. First we need to install some basic apps like Firefox, but it does fail to install because it requires you to own at least Windows XP. That's what the error message says. You can bypass this by opening the compatibility launcher, dragging and dropping your exe file, press enter and then it will bypass that check and it will install as normal. And this works for applications like Firefox, VLC and so on. Let's see what we can do with this daily driver. First, we can watch YouTube. I opened one of my Roblox videos on my main channel and you can see that at 1080p60, it's just too much for this machine, it struggles, but if you have better hardware like a Core 2 Duo, this should run a lot better. At 720p60, it ran just a bit better, but it still struggled with that resolution. At 480p, it was silky smooth, there was no stutters or pauses, it was perfectly fine at 480p. This is just because of the hardware, if you have better hardware, note that you will get a lot smoother experience on YouTube, even with Windows 2000. Since YouTube works on Windows 2000, let's have a look at Discord then, which unfortunately it was a no-go, because you can open Discord in your browser like I did with Firefox, but I tried to enter my username, did a captcha just to make sure I'm not a robot because it was required, but then it would kept freezing itself at this white page. I even tried using the discord.com slash login slash true command, but still no, it didn't load into the page. So for the majority of users, no, Discord does not run on Windows 2000, even with a compatible browser. Well, Discord didn't want to work. Google Maps did want to work and does run. It's quite choppy when you zoom in and you see all the road names and the street names and all of that. It is quite choppy when you zoom in, but if you zoom out and you see like the entire world, then it is a lot smoother and you should explore the map and you can easily prepare your road trips even with Windows 2000. So yes, with the majority of users, with all of these updates and Firefox installed, yes, Google Maps does work on Windows 2000. Well, I thought I would try some crisis on this computer to test its performance. Well, unfortunately, it was a no-go. 
because one of the libraries on one of these systems DLL files are missing unfortunately even the game launcher says that the DLL is missing I haven't tried the compatibility launcher and operating system spoofer to make the game thinking that it is running on Windows XP or Vista but it still gave me the same error, I even tried rebooting the machine and trying again. There are some people that claim to got this game working, but I don't think that's worth trying still. So for the majority of gamers out there, no Crisis does not run on Windows 2000. Something that did work really well is Plants vs Zombies. And it's not the original game, well it kinda is, but did you see on the right that it has a cheat menu? This is a trainer that allows you to cheat in the game, like you can have infinite sun, infinite money and everything on the Zen guard and all of that. To install this cheat you need the .NET Framework 4, you also need a separate version of this game, not the original one, otherwise it will just not work and crash. But since I installed the .NET Framework for the modified version on Windows 2000 earlier, the trainer does run, and the game does run, and as you see, it runs extremely well, even with Windows 2000. Another benchmark is one of my favorite childhood computer games, and that is Spider-Man 2. This is designed to run on weaker machines really well. The video card actually handles it pretty great, but when there are a lot of particles and objects coming directly onto the screen, like when the rhino comes out of the wall, then the performance does dip down to around 30, but for the most part it is playable, even at 1280 by 1024 maximum graphical settings. I liked beating the rhino. Another game that is very demanding on the processor and is single threaded, and that is Minecraft, specifically version 1.16.4, which is one of the latest versions out there at the moment, and surprisingly, this version is compatible with Windows 2000. I use the French Minecraft launcher called BS Launcher. Even if you don't understand French, you can use this launcher. It will give the vanilla Minecraft versions up to 1.16.4. You just need to install the Java Runtime Environment 8. And then, as long as you're running Windows 2000 or Windows XP, this should run really great if you have good hardware. So yes, Minecraft does run on Windows 2000. Another benchmark for this machine is Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Originally, this game requires at least Windows XP to run because on the back of my disk case, it says that it is not supporting Windows 2000, but since the updates extend the kernel closer to Windows XP, the install shield actually identifies the version of Windows as XP, so it does install just like normal, just like on Windows XP or Vista, and the game struggles a bit. This is again due to the hardware. If you have a better GPU or CPU, this should run better, but at least now you know that Call of Duty 4 with a bit of tweaking does run on Windows 2000. And last but not least for this video, I wanted to try out media playback just to see if VLC was fully compatible and not just installing like normal. And yes, it does run 1080p 30fps videos like I have just a vlog video that I've put on my flash drive. It is playing from the flash drive. It isn't copied to the hard drive, so it does run on the flash drive. It runs smooth without any pauses or skips. And yes, media playback does work on Windows 2000 if you have decent hardware. And that's it for this video guys, thank you for watching, and just for the outro I'm showing that Netflix also does run on Firefox on Windows 2000, so you can also watch some movies on your old computer, just like normal on your TV or PlayStation 5 or other platform. So I proved you how you can use your old computer as a daily driver. You can use Windows 2000 as a daily driver for your videos, for online banking and other things. I told you in the beginning of this video that we might upgrade the graphics card in this video. Well, I planned that for another video because I tried upgrading the card to a GT210, the one we tried in the other 
project with this computer and no the drivers failed to install so we will leave the upgrading the graphics card on the Windows 2000 computer in a future project in a future video so thank you so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial it was so difficult to make but it is now super easy for you to understand so that you can use your old hardware as a daily driver even in 2022 and beyond stay safe take care of you peace bye